one of the things I did early on, just six months into my stay in St. Louis, was to be part of a community panel on gun violence that was hosted by a Better Family Life. After the panel, which I felt did not go particularly well from my standpoint because my white coat and long answers were not uh, inspiring to anybody, um, James Clark uh, came up to me and, and we spoke briefly and I shared with him that I knew he knew my boss and our work and he said, yeah, I know your boss. Where are you at? And I thought, wow, well, what, how can I be present? How can I show up? Because I'm a trauma surgeon. We do our work inside the hospital. That is what we do. But then I was like, well, wait a minute. We have our own ability to be part of both helping the public be prepared and also prevent the impact of gun violence. Stop the Bleed is a national campaign that got launched after the tragic shooting in Sandy Hook Elementary in December 2012. And while it's wonderful and it's important, mass shootings represent less than 2% of all gun violence. And I was like, well, how can we take this well thought out approach and apply it to communities and lives where gun violence is not an if, it's a win. In the first year, we taught about 3,000 people. And since the program started, we've taught over 8,000 people and provided about as many trauma first aid kits along the way. We were able to launch our new face of our program, which went way past the initial Stop the Bleed and became effectively known as The T. We had established a international trade to supply ourselves with our trauma first aid material. So in January, I knew something heavy was going on because all our suppliers were shut down. And I said, hmm, maybe we should shift gears because this is coming and it's a public problem that's gonna spread along social lines. It'll be very similar to violence because it will take advantage of those who don't have what they need. And maybe we are in a position the same way we were to stop the bleed to now stop the virus. And now, you know, many, many, many weeks later, I can't even count how many thousands of folks we've been able to reach in partnership with Prepare STL to stop the virus. So it's, it's really powerful because it shows this very simple idea, which is if you are surrounded by bullets, if you're surrounded by a virus, if everyone around you doesn't have what they need in terms of their nutrition, if pain and trauma are the lived and breathed norm, right? It can seem as if the only choice you have is to succumb to it. We say, no, no, no. With the right training, with the right equipment, whether it's a tourniquet or a mask or a Narcan or a bandage, you have the power to change that outcome. You have the power to change the outcome. You don't need to wait for anybody else. So then what's next? So here I am. I say I'm a trauma surgeon in recovery. <laughs> I have been there when many, many, many beautiful black men have taken their last breath. I've talked to mamas and papas, aunts and uncles about what has happened to their loved one too many times. And I have literally been covered in blood more times than you can imagine, all due to the impact of violence. And I have gotten to a point where I can no longer accept that fate for my people having seen the power people have. When you simply take the time to be present, teach, and give. I'm so compelled by both that strength and so disturbed by the horrors I've seen, I can no longer sit inside the walls of the hospital and there is suffering just abounding everywhere around me. And so what I've decided to do is to move my office outside the walls of the hospital. And I will be full time through the work of the T and Power for STL, be pursuing more and more and more what I'm calling community 
health. And so I'm going to be spending my time on four areas, and that will be COVID, bullets, homelessness, and opiates. Uh, and they all are areas where I find both profound resilience and tremendous suffering. One of the ways in which I hope to bring this philosophy of health and well-being being married is in the creation of a new health experience, which I'm calling the BRIC, the Bullet Related Injury Clinic. This clinic is getting set up to serve the needs of people who experience a bullet injury and are discharged from the emergency department after having been shot. Frequently, their wounds are superficial enough that they don't require surgery, but they're deep enough that they still completely disrupt the person's well-being. Amazingly, the coronavirus pandemic has facilitated the growth of this idea because telehealth and the obstacles to telehealth have gone down. And so we'll be using physical presence, telehealth, and hopefully even mobile health to be able to reach people where they are after bullet-related injury. I'm so excited about this because I believe it is the untreated trauma from decades ago that's expressing itself now in all the folks that we see involved in violence. If we want a different future, we have to take care of what's happening right now. And I think we're allowing way too many people to heal on their own without what they need. I wanna give them the knowledge and resources to be well, to truly be well, after experiencing a bullet-related injury. So the brick is hopefully going to be launching later this summer. I've actually stepped down from my position at Washington University so I can do this work and work like it full time. I'm so totally dedicated to the idea that we must practice medicine beyond the walls of the hospital. I am truly grateful to the St. Louis American and the foundation for having a heart for the education of our youth. Uh, I certainly am where I am because people took the time to teach me and I had the mechanism and resource to learn along the way. And I don't really think there is anything more important than that. And so hats off to the American for doing this work. Um, hats off to Rebecca Rivas and the incredible reporting uh, that she has done along the way, bringing light and truth uh, throughout our city. And hats off to everyone who is doing their best to live their authentic truth and working toward their own healing.